In today's episode of Narco States, we will be discussing the state of Durango, one of the 31 states in Mexico. It is the second lowest populated state in Mexico. This state produced the first president of Mexico. Want to know more about this Mexican state? Watch until the end to learn everything about how Durango became a narco state. Before we begin, kindly hit the like button and subscribe for more amazing content like the one you are about to watch. Durango is officially known as the free and sovereign state of Durango. It's situated in northwest Mexico. Durango is named after the hometown of Francisco de Ibarra, which was interchangeably remained. The state tried to pick up its remnants to piece together, but development became limited. One reason has been the limited transportation and other communications. The railroad was a crucial development in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. However, its benefits did not extend far past where the lines went. The state has one international airport serving the capital, which has limited flights to other major Mexican cities and the United States. Even if investments are made into tourism, it will still be lacking. To eradicate poverty and make a living, people began to cultivate poppy plantations. Most of the products were taken to Sinaloa at first to increase the supply. However, the geographical layers of Durango made it into a direct smuggling route. The Durango Mountains are proximity to Mexico City and the northern border leading to the United States. Drug smugglers could directly trade drugs from Durango to the United States. The nearest seaports also prove beneficial as it enhances trade and travel to Mazatlan. Since the colonial periods, the port has been a source of luxury goods exchanged for mined silver from the state. The Interoceanic Highway connects the state with both coasts and cuts travel time to three hours, less than half what it was before. Durango is known for the peaks of the Sierra Madre Occidental visible in the state. The Sierra Madre Occidental is a primary mountain range system of the North American Cordillera. It runs northwest-southeast through northwestern and western Mexico and along the Gulf of California. The Sierra Madre is part of the American Cordillera, a chain of mountain ranges consisting of a nearly continuous sequence of mountain ranges. The arrangement forms the western backbone of North America, Central America, South America, and West Antarctica. The Occidental creates a pathway within Mexico and from Mexico to the United States. Many of these pathways are in Durango, leading to easy access to the drug market in the United States. These pathways have been the goldmine for drug trafficking. There are a few records of drug lords that hail from Durango. As the state is sparsely populated, drug lords who operate in the state are mainly from Sinaloa or other states wanting to establish dominance in Durango. The few drug lords that are indigenous of Durango are Ines Coronel Barreras, a Mexican convicted drug lord and former high-ranking leader of the Sinaloa cartel. He is the father-in-law of Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, the former leader of the Sinaloa cartel. His daughter is Emma Coronel Aispuro, a former beauty queen married to Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. Ignacio Nacho Coronel Villarreal, a Mexican suspected drug lord and one of the founders of the Sinaloa cartel. Durango has Mexico's second lowest population density after Baja California Sur. With almost 2 million residents, its capital city, Victoria de Durango, is named after the first president of Mexico, Guadalupe Victoria. Victoria de Durango, the capital city, was officially established on the 8th of July, 1563. Durango is bordered by Chihuahua, Coahuila, Zacatecas, Nayarit, and Sinaloa, and divided into 39 municipalities. It is the fourth largest state in Mexico, while its capital city is on the foothills of the Sierra Madre Occidental. Durango was active in the Mexican Revolutionary War in the early 1900s. Famous landmarks in Durango include Pancho Villa's home and its scenic waterfalls, hot springs, and nature preserves. Francisco Pancho Villa was a Mexican revolutionary general and one of the most prominent figures of the Mexican Revolution. The state is also a leading supplier of timber and wood products and offer various outdoor activities like canoeing, rock climbing, camping, and nature tours. Durango still lacks in tourism despite the state's natural resources and history. The government promotes the state for tourism. However, its efforts are concentrated in the capital. There are also efforts in two other towns and gradual ecotourism. The state likes to promote itself as a tierra del cine, land of the movies, due to its history of making Hollywood Western. Today, some films and TV are produced here. The best-known tourist product of the state is perhaps related to scorpions. Several entrepreneurs turned the animal into an unofficial symbol of state pride in the 1980s. The scorpions are mostly sold encased in acrylic and mounted on ashtrays, napkin holders, keychains, earrings, wood boxes, and wall mountings. These objects dominate tourist markets such as the Gomez Market in Durango City. Durango has historically been an area associated with banditry and smuggling. 
It's part of the Golden Triangle of Mexico's drug trade with Sinaloa and Chihuahua. The Golden Triangle is known for its larger production and business of Mexican opioids and marijuana. After the Mexican Revolutionary War, Durango was a shadow of its old self. Despite being known for mines of lucrative minerals, many of its citizens were in poverty. Durango, which prided itself as a quiet town in terms of violence, is no longer so. It's a victim of violence associated with turf wars. As a part of the golden triangle of the drug trade, Durango records constant violence, which increases yearly. The rise of a new cartel to become a dominant and impactful organization in Mexico usually leads to violent turf wars experienced in Durango. The Sinaloa cartel is the primary organization rival cartels usually target in their turf war. Since this organization dominates many smuggling plazas in the Golden Triangle, locals always experience the brutality of the wars in Durango. Most of the violence is due to turf battles between the Gulf and the Sinaloa cartels. Specifically, the Sinaloa Zetas Turf War between the Sinaloa Cartel and Los Zetas, the former armed wing of the Gulf Cartel. Drug-related violence became a huge problem. Hundreds of bodies were found in clandestine graves around the city of Durango. The violence reached a peak between 2009 and 2011. Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, former leader of the Sinaloa Cartel, hid out in the state at the time. Felipe Calderon's efforts to combat the drug cartels came in the 2000s, a time Durango experienced a lot of violence. Calderon had a plan to eradicate drug trafficking and drug-related violence nationwide. He deployed 45,000 troops across the country against the well-armed drug gangs. He claimed his efforts were yielding increased violence, attributed to the pressure faced by the cartels. Felipe Calderon's efforts were acknowledged by the then United States President, Barack Obama, as courageous. However, the increased violence may have pointed to how hard it is to crush drug gangs. Military pressure in a region pushes organized crime into less guarded areas. It's known as the cockroach effect. Many drug organizations laying low in the areas heavily infested with military presence and re-establishing in places with less security. Durango is a testament to this effect, which was less guarded than the other trafficking states in the Golden Triangle. With only a few hundred soldiers in Durango, drug assassins from eastern Mexico took over towns kidnapped police, shot down local government offices, and slaughtered rivals. Many local police officers have been killed, and official buildings raided and attacked with grenades, AK-47s, and burned down. The state's small resources prevented the proper clampdown of violence in the state, whose repercussions are still being reaped today. Many locals of Durango are victims, are reported as victims of kidnappings, human trafficking, child trafficking, prostitution, and killings. The ones who safeguard themselves testify that they are now used to the sounds of gun battles, sirens, and helicopters. With its limited economy, Durango relies on drug and blood money. The attractiveness of the state for drug smuggling will keep perishing it amidst the ongoing drug terrorism. Highway robberies were also a particular problem, especially on the highway leading to Mazatlan, then considered the most dangerous in Mexico. Durango and Mazatlan are connected by Highway 40. A new toll highway was built and opened at the end of this period to combat this. What are your thoughts on Durango as a narco state in Mexico? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Did you enjoy the video? Like and comment below. Do not forget to subscribe and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. You'll find our social media handles in the description below.